it's great to be back. So as I touched upon briefly yesterday, uh, you know, the, the role of CTO of the U.S. is basically to be tech entrepreneur in residence for the U.S. government. And it's a new role for me. And before that, for two and a half years, I was CTO and tech entrepreneur in residence at the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. And before that, for most of my professional life, I was a tech entrepreneur in the private sector. But you may ask yourself, what the heck does a tech entrepreneur in residence in the government do? Well, the answer is, is that I get to work with the most amazing innovators in government and outside government to invent and then execute at high speed projects that harness the power of data, tech, and innovation to improve the well-being of the American people, to increase the return that taxpayers get for their investment in government. What kind of initiatives, you might ask? I want to tell you the story briefly of one called the Health Data Initiative, which is a project I, I co-founded a couple years ago at HHS with a team of government folks, folks at the Institute of Medicine and uh, private sector Obi-Wan Kenobis like Tim O'Reilly. Health Data Initiative in a nutshell is data liberacion. The idea is essentially to take vast reservoirs of health and medical related knowledge information sitting in the vaults of HHS and other organizations and liberate it in machine readable electronic form that can then be used by uh, lots and lots and lots of super talented entrepreneurs and innovators outside government as fuel to power all kinds of insights, products, services, programs, future capabilities that improve the health and well-being of American people and create jobs at the same time. The underlying theory behind Health Data Initiative is something called Joy's Law, uh, which was named after Bill Joy, the co-founder of Sun Microsystems and a legendary figure in Silicon Valley. Bill Joy once famously said, no matter who you are, you have to remember that most of the smartest people in the world work for somebody else. Which is, of course, always true, right? So our corollary to that is if you want to maximize social return on taxpayer investment in health data, don't just have smart people at HHS work on it and, and a few other people who happen to know about it, actually liberate it so everyone who cares about health and healthcare improvement can take that data and use it as fuel to make magic happen, to make awesomeness happen on behalf of the American people. So it's a really simple play, actually. One, we're publishing brand new data that's never been made available before to the public and to qualified external alliances. Secondly, less sexily but equally importantly, it turns out that a whole bunch of data that we have made publicly available is useless to developers. It's in PDFs, it's in books, it's in websites and other illiquid forms. So we're taking that data and making it machine readable, downloadable, accessible via APIs. In other words, importable into third party websites, platforms, applications that can do wonderful things for the American people. And then finally, we realized pretty rapidly that about 95% plus of entrepreneurs that could actually turn our data into awesomeness had no idea that we even had this data. Barely knew what HHS even does, let alone the fact that we have this data, let alone the fact that we're making it available to them as machine-readable fuel for awesomeness. So we've ended up actually having to do a marketing campaign to market the bejesus out of our free data using unconventional tactics like hackathons and uh, you know, competitions, challenges, meetups, to make our data into something people know about and can turn into magic. So what kinds of data, you might ask? Well, it's impossible to describe in the, in the time that we have, but everything from community health and healthcare performance data, including determinants of health performance by community across the country, that uh, cities like Cincinnati, communities around the country, uh, uh, remember the Cincinnati story I told yesterday, can use to help understand where they stand and plot a path as to where they want to go. Uh, a lot of rich data about healthcare provider quality that providers like those in Cincinnati can use to help see where they stand and plot where they want to go. Medicare claims data in an increasing variety of formats. Uh, patient education information by the ton, made machine readable now, broadcast by the National Library of Medicine. Consumer product information on drugs, insurance, et cetera. Uh, Blue Button, which is an initiative that the VA, Department of Defense and Medicare, launched about a year and a half ago that enables now millions and millions and millions of veterans, members of the military, and Medicare beneficiaries to download a machine readable copy of their own data which is actually now being copied as a move by private organizations across the country. So lots and lots and lots and lots of data, and we're marketing the heck out of it <laughs> through hackathons and challenges and meetups and something called health data palooses, which you may have heard about. Uh, you may think it odd that the government's doing a data palooza, but it's actually the hot new thing for us to do. In partnership with Institute of Medicine and a lot of other uh, organizations, we're doing these data palooses where essentially uh, we issue an open call for any innovator in America who's done something awesome with our data and built a product service program with it that helps consumers, helps doctors, employers, journalists, communities improve health and healthcare. They're invited to give a TED style talk at a major forum where we make them famous. We've had a problem uh, in these uh, data palooses. Uh, last year's uh, data palooza, for example, um, we had way the heck too many people that qualified. 
So we ended up doing an American Idol style bake-off <laughs> to narrow it down uh, to the ones we could fit into the conference center. Uh, I wasn't a judge, but I was an observer. People started calling me Paula Abdul. <laughs> I don't watch American Idol, but apparently she's very enthusiastic and loves everyone, weeps and gets angry at the other judges for being mean. That was me, guilty, yeah. But the other judges were fortunately much more discriminating than me, narrowed it down last year to 50 amazing innovations innovators that then we made famous at Data Palooza. Now I'll tell you what, if your faith in America right now is wavering even a smidgen, go to the Institute of Medicine's website, look up June 2011 Health Data Initiative Forum, and watch the video of as many of these 50 innovators as you possibly can. Because it is the most awe-inspiring display of American mojo I've ever seen. And I can't possibly do justice to it, especially the, the negative time that I have. Uh, but uh, all kinds of amazing innovations. Innovations that help consumers find the right healthcare provider for their family. Get information just in time, it's exactly what they need to help them with their health condition. Uh, get enrolled in a clinical trial that they actually find out about and that could save their life. Uh, innovations that help doctors and hospitals deliver better, safer care. Become successful medical homes like the ones in Cincinnati or successful accountable care organizations. Uh, tools that help journalists crunch large amounts of data really inexpensively and write stories about healthcare disparities. <laughs> The radiation. Yes. Yeah, from Todd here. <laughs> and, and I know that uh, time is running out. Well, it's but, not running but, out because I want to ask your question. Oh, sorry. Actually, it sorry. ran out, but you're staying. Oh, okay. Okay. So, well, so punchline, punchline. Uh, these are innovations that have been built not by us. Okay. We didn't expend a single dime of taxpayer money to build this stuff. All we did was take data that you've already paid for as taxpayers and just jujitsued it in the public domain. Right? <laughs> and made people realize it was there. Tell them. And I American know. entrepreneurs <laughs> Tell did them. the rest. And what's resulting, what's resulting is this incredible, self-propelled, beautifully chaotic, decentralized, uniquely American ecosystem innovation fueled by a rising tide of data that's helping to improve health and healthcare in all kinds of ways and create jobs at the same time. Todd, that's not enough enthusiasm. <laughs>